So yesterday, Visa reported disappointing numbers. Actually, so disappointing that revenue were up 10%, adjusted earnings was up 12%, and all the key drivers were either up high single digit to double digit. That is quite disappointing, right? And then you're going to say, but Mike, that doesn't make any sense. You just told me that it was disappointing. Well, Stock price dropped by almost 4% on earnings day. And next week, we're going to have MasterCard reporting their earnings. And then the big question is, should you buy Visa? Should you buy MasterCard? Or is there any difference between both? So today, we're going to take a look at their business model, their growth vectors, their downside potential. And after that, we are going to go into DSR to use the stock comparison tool and see which of those two companies or maybe another one like American Express or Discovery should be a better buy in the credit card universe. So when I analyze a stock, I like to start by understanding their business model. And if you're not able to explain the business model to a 12 year old, well, then you have a pretty solid sign that you are missing something and you may make a big mistake investing in this company. So for Visa and MasterCard, they have exactly the same business model. They are payment processors. So some people will say, oh, they're in the financial sector because they're handling money. But we could also argue that they are in the technology sector because it's all about trust, security, and transferring money efficiently, processing millions of transactions all the time on one place to another. So they are also a technology company. And finally, they could also be categorized as a consumer discretionary company because if the economy goes up, consumers spend money. And if they spend money, they travel. Of course, they're going to use their credit card. And this is how they make money. They make money on the fee they charge to the merchant, which is amazing business. So a lot of people think, oh, Visa and MasterCard has a big risk because they carry on consumers' debt. Well, they don't. They partner up with banks and the banks will have the debt on their balance sheet while Visa and MasterCard, they're simply like a toll road. They're charging whenever there's a transaction, but they are not responsible on the debt. So if the consumer is not paying at the end of the month, they don't care. They made their money by charging the merchant. That's it. That's all. So recurring money. It benefits from a huge mode because everybody wants to use their credit card to use their points now. And then Merchant has pretty much no other choices but to offer both. I remember when I was young, it was kind of complicated to sometimes have a, a Merchant that will accept Visa, MasterCard, and American Express. Today, they're all pretty much forced to accept all of those. And it's relatively easy, especially for Visa and for MasterCard, to get approved by Merchant because they are known worldwide. They are being used everywhere. And I just came back from a trip in Iceland and at no time I needed cash. I only used my credit card, which is probably one of the most important growth vectors for both companies, once again, because they have like the same business model. They will grow because people use less and less cash and they want to transfer money electronically with their card, with their phone. But when you're paying with your phone, you're actually paying with the credit card that you have included in your phone. So it's always about the same system where they charging fees and it's super easy to predict that cash flow coming forward. So while the market was quite disappointed by double digit growth, we can see that consumers are spending more, they're traveling more, and when they're traveling, it's also generating even more money from Visa and MasterCard. Why? Because then they change for currency conversion. So their most growth, their biggest growth vectors are people going from cash to electronic or plastic payment. The fact that we consume more, we travel more, and also that there are those fees being charged on every single transaction. Speaking of fees, while this makes them like one of the perfect business model as they work in a duopoly because all the other credit cards will carry on the debt for their customers, but we're going to talk about that later on today. Um, what is what is maybe the biggest risk is also all the fees they charge to merchant. Um, recently, they were almost about to close an antitrust uh, 
investigation while they were offering some like to lower the fees and so on but the DOJs were just like yeah no that's not gonna cut it so we're gonna keep on investigating and we're gonna stick working on that so merchants are tired for the fees there are antitrust laws that are going after also the fact that they are a duopoly and all merchants are pretty much stuck with them. Even Amazon tried a few years ago to ban Visa transaction in the UK. That kind of lasts like maybe like a week or 10 days and then they went back on the negotiation table. So we can see that there is a feeling of merchant being upset about those fees, but it is very hard to get outside of that. So that would be a slowdown on their growth going forward. Um, of course, they are depending on the economy. So whenever the consumer sees their budget tightening, they will travel less, they will buy stuff, they will be buy less stuff, and therefore less volume, less transaction, and that will lead to lower, vol lower revenue and lower earnings. But in the end, those are like pretty small downsides. So when I look at both Visa and MasterCard, they show an amazing business model, well protected by the duopoly, by the network effect, and the fact that it is a scaling business. So they benefit from the economies of scale. And tomorrow morning, if I try to start a transactional business, well, it will be very hard for me to benefit from the recognition of the brand. So merchant will not likely want to approve my credit card. So imagine like the DSR credit card, that would be cool, right? But probably not gonna happen. I don't have the mean, I don't have the technology, and I don't have the brand recognition. So solid moti business so is there a difference between visa and mastercard well to answer that question from the qualitative analysis that i just made there's not much difference so now we're going to look into the numbers to see if we can pick up a clear winner and to do that we're going to use dsr stock comparison tool so here we are on my membership website, Dividend Stocks Rock, where all DSR Pro members have access to one of the most powerful tools to compare more than one stock together. It is the stock comparison tool right here. So the stock comparison tool is quite easy to use. You can load a pre-selection, but today we're going to go directly to look at MasterCard. And we're also going to add Visa to the mix to see if we can find a business that has better numbers. Um, so for the overview, while both are in the financial sector, both are in the credit services, as I told you before, I would qualify, classify both companies as one-third financial, one-third technology, and one-third uh, consumer discretionary, because it really depends on how much consumers want to spend with their card. Um, the beta is pretty similar. So this one is slightly more volatile than Visa for MasterCard, but not more, not, not enough to make a difference. In terms of prorating and dividend safety score, they have the maximum at DSR. Both of them are amazing. And we're going to see why. When you look at the dividend triangle right here, we have revenue growth over the past five years. So this is uh, analyzed growth rate of almost 11% for MasterCard, almost 10% for Visa. So slight advantage for MasterCard here. For the earnings, we have a similar uh, advantage again. So 16% for MasterCard over the past five years, 13.38 for Visa. So again, pretty solid business growing double digit their revenue and also double digit their earnings and the fact that earnings are growing a little bit faster than revenue tells us that there are there is room for margin expansion which is kind of great because this is what we like as an investor we want a business that is able to grow their sales grow their profit but also show that they are ends on on their margin and this will obviously reflect to the third metric of the dividend triangle so the dividend growth almost 18 percent over the past five years for mastercard and oh almost 17 percent for visa so at this point i would say both businesses have a almost copy paste business model so same risk same growth vectors the numbers of the dividend triangle is slightly better for MasterCard. So if I stop my analysis right now, I would be tempted to put my $2 on MasterCard. But let's 
dig further to see if there's any other points of comparison that could be interesting. Uh, one thing that I really like to do is to look at the overall trend because it's one thing to have the numbers, but it's even better if you can look at the trend that will tell you a little bit more about what's going on. So we're going to take a quick look at their stock cards right away. So now we are on MasterCard. What I want to see here is how the dividend triangle is moving. So as you can see here, we have revenue that are quite stable and we see that there's a bit of a down, of course, during the pandemic. That is also followed by the same down, the same slowdown for the earnings again due to the same event, but that didn't impact their dividend growth rate at all. So overall, uh, we are looking here at a nearly perfect dividend triangle over the past, not five years, but rather 10 years, which is quite impressive. So let's take a look at Visa just to see if there is a difference between MasterCard and Visa at this point. So going back again for the dividend triangle, we have the same dip in 20. 2020 to 2021 for the revenue and the earnings. But for the rest of it, again, we do have a pretty straight line. Um, a little bit shakier here for the earnings back in 2017, 20, uh, 2016. Maybe it would be worth it to go back in time to look at what happened. But over the past five years, it's pretty shooting towards the right direction for both businesses. So going back to the stock comparison. So we're done with the overview, we're done with the dividend triangle, and we have a slight winner so far for MasterCard. Um, in terms of dividend metrics, uh, the yield is pretty similar, slightly advantage on Visa, but again, it's not necessarily moving the needle in my opinion same thing for the payout ratio so we have a cash payout ratio of 20 percent for mastercard 22 for visa and then we have 21 for the cash payout ratio and then 20 for visa so again pretty much head to head in terms of metrics we can see also the dividend growth rate uh over the past one three and five years Similar, so we see that over the past three years, it's a little bit better for Visa, but the for the past five years, it's better for MasterCard. So again, very hard to find a winner here for the Chowder score, which is the uh, dividend growth rate for the past five years, plus the dividend yield. We are also having a better performance for MasterCard. Again, 18.5 versus 17.7. .7. So pretty close, but just a little bit for MasterCard once again. And full disclaimer, it's kind of funny to do this comparison chart because I hold shares of Visa and I do not hold shares of MasterCard. So maybe I should start thinking about making the change, right? Well, one last step before we go to the conclusion, before we take a look at American Express and Discovery, just to end up this video on a nice note, uh, I just wanted to look at the valuation metrics. So valuation metrics in terms of market cap, we do have a winner here where Visa is the leader in terms of market capitalization, but it also uh, has more merchant process more transactions so they are the leader in payment transaction and visa is the second one in place uh not a bad position as you can see it shows better metrics maybe that explains why it's able to grow a little bit faster so being the challenger sometimes will push the business to be a little bit more innovative while visa can just come laid back and uh just keep that edge over time in terms of payout ratio, um, in terms of PE ratio, what we have here, well, as MasterCard has outperformed Visa for the dividend triangle, it also reflects that you have to pay a steeper price. So the PE ratio is higher, the forward PE ratio is higher, and when you compare it to the average of the past five years, um, we do see that everything is a little bit higher for MasterCard. So in terms of valuation, I would say that probably that Visa is slightly a better deal than MasterCard. Um, so on the metric side, we do have a better financial performance on v uh, for MasterCard on the valuation, slightly better performance for Visa, but overall, there's not a huge deal here. Both companies trade at a high P ratio, but compared to their average, they're still offering some an interesting entry point at this point where on average over the past five years, the market was willing to pay almost 42 times the earnings, right now paying 35 times with a, P, a forward P ratio under 30. And same story here where the average at 36, 
The current P ratio is at 33 and the forward P ratio is at around 25. So once again, the market is being a little bit less right now for the earnings than it was in the past. So now moving on to the debt structure. Well, of course, as I told you before, both companies do not carry the consumer's debt on their balance sheet. So it's not at a risk. And it's a pretty good thing because when we have a recession, they will not have to deal with collection with their customers. In terms of debt to equity ratio, we see that MasterCard has more debt and equity than Visa, but it's more about how they structure the business. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just to understand that MasterCard is using a little Bit more debt than using shares to finance their activities while it's the opposite for visa um, in terms of the current p ratio the credit score were slightly better on visa side so once again we have like slight advantage but so far it's really really hard to create a winner and decide of a winner so before i get to that winner because i do have one in mind i just want to go back here and look at the financial metrics especially the dividend triangle by looking at American Express. So you can see that we have a lot of companies right here. So we're going to add American Express and we're going to add Discovery, which is really important for those two. They do have the debt on their balance sheet. So it is a little bit, uh, it's, it's another risk factor that Visa and MasterCard doesn't have to deal with where American Express and Discover Financial will have to carry on the debt. So, so far they have not been affected as you can see for the dividend triangle. We do have pretty solid numbers. So revenue growth at 8%, earnings per share at seven, the dividend 10 to 12%. So that is pretty good numbers but they're not as good as MasterCard and Visa. And when we look at their stock cards, and this is where I'm willing to discard both of them if I have to make a choice, it is going a lot, like you can see that the earnings and the revenue got affected a lot more during the pandemic. And that also created a pause in their dividend growth policy. If we look at Discovery, we are going to have a similar result. Actually, even worse right now, we see that earnings are going down. It's the only company where the earnings are going down while the other three are keeps on rocking the boat. And again, they had to pause their dividend growth policy during the COVID. And it's normal because they are subject to any recession. They will be affected by those. For, for those reasons, I'm ready to take those one out and just focus on Visa and MasterCard. Card. If you went this far in this video and you are interesting in, interested in finding companies like Visa and MasterCard that has a low yield but a high dividend growth rate, well, I do have the perfect guide for you to build your entire portfolio around this strategy and it is called Dividend Income for Life. The guide is 100% free. You just have to key in your email. You will receive it in your mailbox. Uh, that is my way to communicate with you and send you even more resources because we do have a secret resource page with a lot more resource that can help you become a better investor grow your conviction and have kind of like a mind map here where to know how to build a low yield high growth type of thought a type of portfolio that will do not only good during your accumulation phase but will actually be better in the retirement phase and in the guide i explain you why Focusing on high yield is a lot riskier and could you put your your retirement into Joe Party versus looking at the low yield high growth stocks will sustain the dividend payment that you need and generate enough revenue for you to retire stress-free. So just go on dividendstocksrock.com slash income, download the report, and you can thank me later. So overall, to end up this epic battle between an amazing company and an amazing company, I would say that there are a few things that you can decide to pick one or the other. And I would like ended up saying both of them could be in your portfolio, but do not, I would count them as only one position. So if you would like to have a 4% position in a company like this, I would go 2% MasterCard, 2 Visa. But if you really want to have only one stock in your portfolio, you can use the following criteria to make your decision. So if you want to pick the one that is performing the best right now in terms of financial metrics and looking at the dividend triangle, MasterCard is a 
clear winner. So slightly better for revenue growth, slightly better for earnings, and slightly better for dividend. Well, if you're better everywhere, this is called performance. On the other side, Visa trades at a cheaper value and is the leader in the market. Personally, I prefer to buy leaders, uh, but it's just to give me an additional sense of conviction and confidence in the business. Again, both companies looks great. I'm super happy with my choice with Visa, but MasterCard could have been a pretty solid performer in my portfolio as well. And if I look at the past five and 10 years, well, the choice would have been better off with MasterCard. So I have to tell you, past historical returns, both are crazy, but MasterCard still a little bit ahead of the other two. So that concludes my epic battle. I'm happy with Visa, but you could be happy with MasterCard. And if you, 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 if you want to have both, well, just split your position in two and then it's a done deal. Let me know in the comment which one you have. And ironically, I use MasterCard as a credit card, but I do not use it Visa. I just keep it in my portfolio. So let me know which is your favorite credit card company. And we're going to continue this discussion in the comments below. All right, guys, take good care. Don't forget to like the channel, subscribe, and we're going to talk again next Thursday. Until then, don't forget to stay invested.